Hello, welcome to this video on S2, Chapter 6, Populations and Samples. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at in this chapter is difference between a census and a sample, um, and some of the advantages and disadvantages of both. Before we get started, let's define a few of those key terms. Uh, the first word is population. So a population is a group of individuals. Now these individuals... Maybe people, or maybe inanimate objects. They could be, um, I don't know, TVs, or they could be all the elephants in Africa. Um, they could be anything you like. Uh, that's the beauty of being a mathematician. They haven't got to be uh, people, just because you call them individuals. Um, it could be a finite population, or an infinite population. Now, really, there's nothing, there's no such thing as an infinite population of anything. Um, by infinite, we just mean very large. So often you see that word large appear in some questions, it means that you can treat it like it's without a limit. And we'll come to that uh, a bit later, but why it's important. Um, so population is just a group of things. A census, then, is where you collect information is uh, collected from all members or all individuals. Of a population. So, for example, you might go and work out um, the ages of all the elephants in Africa, because your population is all elephants in Africa. Um, or you may be asking all the employees at your uh, business um, what their opinion is on your new policy you put in place. I don't really mind what you're asking, but you're asking every single person in that population. Uh, a sample, then, is different because it just is about collecting information from a subset of individuals in the population. So say a population is all the uh, elephants in Africa, I might just go and collect the information about how old, I know, 50 of them are, the first 50 that I find, for example. That's a sample, because it doesn't contain all the individual population may not be a very good sample, or maybe a very good sample. Uh, we'll come to what's a good and bad sample in a second. Sample is just a subset of those people. Um, here's some other important words. Sampling units. A sampling unit is just an individual. So, it literally, it could be any individual in that population. So, it could be one of those elephants, or any one of those TVs we're talking about, or any of the people in your workplace. Um, it doesn't matter if they're picked for the sample or not. They're just something that could possibly be chosen to be part of the sample. So, if there's a sampling unit, there are potential things that could be in the sample. They're not the things in the sample, if that makes sense. Sampling frame is either word we need to get down on paper before we start doing anything else. So a sampling frame is something like a list, or an index, or a map, or a file, or a database. And what it is, is it basically is a way of um, giving a unique number or code or something which allows you to pick individuals for a sample. Now, to be a sampling frame, um, what we do is make sure that every single member of the population, every individual, is in that list somewhere. So it must be a complete list. It's not a true sampling frame. Is if, not, if every sampling unit isn't included, it's not a sampling frame. Um, which may seem pedantic, but it's often harder than it looks to find a sampling frame. For example, it would be very difficult to find a sampling frame for all the uh, um, elephants in Africa, because trying to identify how many elephants there are, where they are, who they are, would be difficult, and having a list of all of them would be very useful. Uh, whereas sometimes it's very easy to have a sampling frame, like for example, um, for TVs produced by a company, each TV has its own unique number, that would be the list of all those unique numbers would be your sampling frame. Or for, say, members of um, an organisation, em employees, they will have their own payroll number, so the list of all their payroll numbers would be a sampling frame. It allows you to pick um, a sample from that population 
and that'd be important when we talk about um, random sampling later because having a complete list is is required in order to have a random sample otherwise you end up with uh, biased samples but more on that soon um, let's talk about the differences then between a census and a sample uh, and what the advantages are of each and disadvantages so a census um, what are the advantages of taking a census Well, I guess the first thing is because you're actually asking the question or finding out the information or finding what it is out from every single individual, um, that means that the answer you get is unbiased. There's no way you could ask certain members of the public just to make sure that it's sort of skewed in your favour. So you get, an, you get an accurate answer. I think that's the main reason you want to do a census is to ensure accuracy, to ensure you've got the, the right answer. Of course, the disadvantages are... That, that comes at a cost. It comes an increased amount of time. Um, and it's very difficult to make sure that everyone's surveyed. The cost is because you've got to ask the same question to everyone. So that's a very large amount of time and a very large monetary investment to make sure that question gets asked to everyone. Say you're surveying all the evidence in Africa, how are you going to make sure that you've not missed any? Um, and actually you've got to capture and, or, or tag or locate all those elephants. That's a very difficult thing to do. Um, asking a person in your employment is, if again, a very difficult thing to do. It costs you time and it costs you money. So possibly you don't want to do this for those reasons. But on the upside, you do get a good, accurate answer. What about if you had a sample? What are the advantages and disadvantages of that? Well, these kind of like go hand in hand with disadvantages of the other one, right? So the advantages of a sample is, well, it's cheaper because you haven't got to ask as many people. So you haven't got to spend much time doing it. So less time consuming. Um, it's particularly good, actually, if, um, if a test you have requires the destruction of the um, item or unit. So this obviously won't be for people anymore, but say you're testing your TVs to see you know, how many times you can turn them on and off before uh, the wires in them take a toll and they wear out, or um, how many times you can sit on a chair before it breaks. Uh, things like that that, that that products have to undergo. Um, if you're, your test requires destruction of the, item, of the um, item, then obviously you do not want to be testing every single one you made. Um, that's, that's obvious, isn't it? Because that would mean you've got nothing to sell. Uh, disadvantages? Well, uh, I guess the disadvantages are that it's the potential there for it to be bias. The bias could come from the actual problems with having a sample frame. So if your sample frame is incomplete, as I'm by, you haven't got every uh, possible individual who's not in this list, it means you don't you can't fairly pick every um, some people just couldn't be picked they couldn't be picked then that's going to introduce bias because their um, result is never going to be included in your answer um, I suppose another form of bias is that the way you choose your sample um, creates a bias towards the answer so an example would be non-random sampling which we talk about more in the next video, um, or if your feelings uh, influence the answer, which may sound like obvious, you don't use if you let your feelings get involved. But um, when you often pick people for a sample, you you can end up introducing feelings without realizing you're doing it. Um, the last thing in disadvantage, I think, would be in the uncertainty it comes. Even if you rule out any kind of bias and it's a, an unbiased sample, it's still just, you know, due to random variation in the sample. Just by pure luck, you may end up just picking all the older elephants or all the younger ones just because you got unlucky, not because your sample was biased, but because um, that particular sample happened by pure random coincidence to have. Uh, a fluctuation which causes an uncertainty in it. So there we go, that's um, censuses versus samples. In the next video, we'll look at uh, random sampling.